Hello cuties, how are we all doing? Today we're gonna be filming my most anticipated releases for the second half of 2024. Do not talk to me about how it's already this point in the year. I feel like 2024 has basically not existed for me. <laughs> I feel like I've been saying that every year. <laughs> From now on, this topic is out of bounds. I like to split my anticipate releases up into two because A, there's so many of them. How many? I've got 91. I'm only gonna read like 150 books this year. And I've only read, and I've read like 60 books this year and I've only read six 24 releases. So you do the math on that one. <laughs> But yeah, there's so many of them that it makes sense to split it into two. And also I find that some books that are coming out towards the end of the year don't get announced until a little bit later. I also don't have any releases for November or December, which I'm a little bit concerned about. I don't know how that's really happened. I mean, they are usually lighter release months because publishers want some like hype to build up before Christmas. So like they want it to be like books you've already heard about that you're buying people for Christmas. So it doesn't make sense, but um, that's kind of crazy. So anyways, we're gonna be going through all of my most anticipated releases from July up until I guess October. <laughs> Because I currently don't have any for November or December. If you do have any that you think I'd enjoy, please let me know. And what I do with my most anticipated releases videos is I read, I've just gone through just now and read this, reread the synopses for all of these. I've obviously read the synopses before to add them to my, my thing, add them to my spreadsheet, but I've just gone through and I've reread all the synopses and then I don't read the synopses out to you in this video because I think that'd be boring. I just try to like tell you the synopsis based on my memory. <laughs> Which, considering I just read like 35 book synopsis, is kind of difficult, <laughs> but we're gonna try our best. I think this helps because it kind of just gives you the key pointers that you need to know about a book, and then if you are interested in them, you can go and like read the full synopsis. But I think if I sat here and read the synopsis for 35 books, it would be here for ages and be, I don't know, I'm not very good at reading things out, so I just think this is more fun. So, shall we just get into it and talk about the books I'm most excited to read? I love doing these videos so much. I can't explain to you guys how much I love doing anticipated releases videos because it makes me love reading. There's I love it. I love it and it gives me that buzz. It's It feeds exactly what I want to do. It's the same thing I love about TBR videos. I love doing videos where I'm talking about books that I'm excited to read that I haven't read yet because the promise is still alive. These books could all be five stars for all I know. They won't be. <laughs> they could all be five stars for all I know. And just talking about books that I'm really excited for and there's still so much promise and not many people have read them so who knows how good they're gonna be. Oh, I just love it. So shall we get started? Oh, also I should say some of these are UK releases. Some of them, I have not checked all of them so some of them may have a different release in the UK. We're gonna go through release order but some of them like, I'm pretty sure the Ruth Ware one is already out in the US. It's not out in the UK. The Examiner will have a different date in the US. There's a few that have different dates and I usually, there's certain authors that I know always tend to publish a little bit later in the UK so I always check them but this is mostly, there'll some, some of these books might already be out in the US. Firstly we have got A Talent for Murder by Peter Swanson. I just got the arc of this. This one's very exciting. It is the third in the series but can someone let me know if you've read The Kind Worth Killing and The Kind Worth Saving? Do I have to read The Kind Worth Saving before I read this? Because it seems like kind of a standalone mystery where just one of our characters from the first book of the series is in it and is investigating the mystery, but it's basically about a woman. A mild-mannered librarian suspects her husband could be a serial killer. So I think she goes through and sees a pattern of places that he's lived and girls who have gone missing essentially and endeavors to find out whether he is a killer or not, which I'm very, yeah, I'm very, very excited for this one. Peter Swanson is hit or miss. I did really enjoy the kind worth killing though. So I'm excited to see what I think of this one. Then we have The Truth About the Devlins by Lisa Scottlein. I, I've never read from this author and I don't really know why I added this one to my spreadsheet. Who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? But it must have sounded good at the time. Basically it's about this family where they're all very successful lawyers and one of them, TJ I think, he's kind of the cast out of the family. He's not doing very well. He's got kind of like a low down job within the family's firm. But one of his brother comes to him and says he's killed someone and he endeavors to investigate, is that true? What's happening? Yada yada. Then we have one I'm very excited for. We have Imposter Syndrome by Joseph Knox. So Joseph Knox wrote True Crime Story, which is a very, very unique murder mystery, all told through interviews and also has like a very interesting element where like the author is a character. Joseph Knox is a fictional character in the book, which I loved. It makes it feel so real. This one is about a guy who meets a woman who says, oh my God, you look like my 
brother who is presumed dead and mistakes him for him and he goes and meets the family and the mother says okay let's make a deal we'll pay you to pretend to be my son who has gone missing presumed dead and you need to investigate what happened to him he's like okay and then he starts thinking people are following him strange things starts happening he starts to think actually someone was out for this brother so i'm really excited to see what joseph knox does with this i think it's going to be fascinating i think i i want there to be another kind of added element to it like there was with true crime story so i'm hoping that'll be the case then we have i was a teenage slasher by stephen graham jones i've read quite a few stephen graham jones and have enjoyed them this one is just about i think like a teenage killer we're following like the villain am i the villain i don't think i'm the villain villain i think it's set in the 1980s and it's also set in the town where stephen graham jones grew up so it's a lot to do with the place and the location but we're following a killer bestie we're following the, the baddie <laughs> and maybe rooting for them so i think that's a very interesting dynamic and i'm loving all of these like slasher nostalgic inspired like i loved um, my best friend's exorcism which is set in the 80s i love anything that has a really evocative location and setting and i feel like this one will do then we have bury your gaze by chuck tingle i've never read anything by Chuck Tingle but a lot of my patrons we have a few on this list that ones my patrons were really excited for and I've added this one is about a screenwriter who is told you have to kill off your gay character for like the show to do well the algorithm to do well and he's like um I don't know I know Chuck Tingle's the one who writes all of those like weird books <laughs> like I married a computer or whatever I don't know <laughs> <laughs> but this is more of a mainstream release and I've heard really good things about it. Oh, Bless Your Heart by Lindy Ryan is another one that was suggested by one of my patrons. This one is about this group of women who I think run a... Um, undertakers who run like a funeral home business and they've done it for years and years and years this one is also historical I can't remember what time period I want to say 1960s but I feel like that's wrong hang on let's let's consult <laughs> no it's 1999 <laughs> but I did tell a bit of a lie there but anyways the town gossip the town gossip comes in dead and she rises from the dead <laughs> And she rose from the dead and it becomes clear that like a vampire is back in town. There's a vampire. So it's set in like the south. It's got a lot of southern charm to it. There's vampires. It reminds me a lot of Southern Guy Southern Book Club's Guide to Saying Vampires. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this one. I love the cover. I think it's gonna be really, really fun. So I'm looking forward to that one. Oh, then we have One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware, which a lot of people have been telling me about because I think this is out in the US. I could be wrong, but a lot of people have been reading it. Maybe it's been arcs, I don't know. But this is Ruth Ware's new release, which Ruth Ware. I have never given less than a four star. I have not yet read, oh wait, no, what did I give? The It Girl, did I give it a four? I think I did, anyways, moving on. Uh, <laughs> I haven't read Zero Days yet, but I love Ruth Ware, and I feel like she's been veering more towards like domestic thriller or whatever, and I my favorite Ruth Ware is One by One, which is a classic isolated murder mystery, and it seems like we're getting it again, baby! I was so... <laughs> I'm so excited. So this one is about these couples who go on this like couples retreat, couples event. I think it's like a Love Island kind of thing. They're on a TV show. They go and travel to this island and things start going wrong and then they're cut off. There's a storm and they're stuck on this island and maybe people start getting killed. I am. It's like a couples Love Island. Like they go on this show and it's like competing as couples. I'm so excited. I'm so... Ruth Ware. Ruth Ware. Ruth Ware. Please deliver. I'm really hoping that I enjoy this. I, oh, I just really hope that it's everything I'm dreaming it to be. <laughs> then we have a very interesting one. We have Queen Bee, The Story of Anne Boleyn, Witch Queen by Juno Dawson. So this is pitched as 0 0.5 in the Her Majesty's Royal Coven series. So I've only read the first one and usually I don't put books on this list where I am not up to like that point in the series. Like if a third book in a series is coming out that I've read the first one, I won't put it on here because I haven't read the second one. So I'm not sure if I want to read it, you know? But this one is like a prequel and it's after Anne Boleyn has been killed and it's someone trying to investigate who betrayed the coven because she was a witch, baby. Because everyone, remember, everyone says Anne Boleyn was a witch. Anne Boleyn was so that girl. She mother. Not just mother, I might actually change it to the mother. She was that girl. I feel like it's a universal experience growing up as a girl that you are obsessed with Anne Boleyn. Like there was just something about Anne Boleyn. I remember when we did Tudors at primary school and like we had to draw one of the wives. You bet believe I was drawing Anne Boleyn, baby. And like going to the Tower of London and seeing the exhibits about her. There's just something about her story that I think is, she's the most interesting of Henry, Henry VIII's wives. So yeah, this is a novella about the first witch queen coven and like who betrayed them. I think this is gonna be so much fun. Anne Boleyn. 
<laughs> I'm so excited. Guys, doesn't this make you so excited to read? Aren't you just like loving reading? Oh, I love life. Then we have Seven Lively Suspects by Katie Watson. This is the third in the Three Dahlia series, which not enough people are reading. I went and checked the other day. It seems like only 500, the second book only has 500 ratings. This is a criminally underrated cozy mystery series for me. Like it's so much better than so many of these cozy mystery, English, quaint books that I read. Like it's better than the Marlowe Murder Club, it's better than Spoonful of Murder, it's better than Death and Croissants, it's better than like all of these books that have way more readers. This is so severely underrated. So we're following the three Dahlias again who are these actresses who have played this very well known uh, character throughout the years and in this one I believe they're investigating there was a copycat murder like 10 years ago where it seems like this killer copied a a Dahlia Lively um, mystery book so like a like as if you reenacted a Cuparo book in real life and someone was arrested for it and now it seems like they think that the wrong person was arrested for it and these girlies are investigating it. Then we have What Have You Done by Sherry Lapina. I haven't read a new release Sherry Lapina since Not Happy Family which I didn't enjoy but there are some Sherry Lapinas out there that are great. Like I loved The Unwanted Guest and I really did enjoy, what's the other one? The one with the baby? What is it? The Couple Next Door. That's probably her most popular one, isn't it? Um, and this is Shadow Pina's new release this year. And the, the synopsis is quite vague. We're in this small town in the US where you know people don't lock their doors. Everyone feels very safe. And then one day a girl is murdered. And that's all we really know. That's all we really know. I am intrigued by it. I feel like I've always enjoyed Shadow Pina's writing. My issue with Not A Happy Family was more like the plot. But I, there is something about Shirley Pinner's writing that I do really enjoy. Next we have one that I was sent unsolicited. <laughs> I did not request this book because uh, I did not love this author's first book when everyone else did. But I'm intrigued by it. So we have got The Pairing by Casey McQuiston. Where we're following these two bisexual exes who accidentally book the same European food and wine tour. And challenge each other to a hookup competition to prove they're over each other. I'm very intrigued by it. I think the setting of Europe, this European food and wine tour will be very cool. Oh, I like these little chapter breaks. Oh, Florence, we're in Florence, baby. <laughs> I'm intrigued by this one. I, listen, I have not read any Casey McQuiston since I read Red, since I read Red, White, and Wild I haven't read any Casey McQuiston since then. And I've been a little bit scared off, but maybe this, everything happens for a reason. And I feel like this was sent to me for a reason. <laughs> So I'm excited to see what I think of it. Maybe maybe this will be an improvement on Red, White and Royal Blue for me. And next we have Death at Morning House, which is a little bit of a vague synopsis. This is by Maureen Johnson. He wrote the Truly Devious series, which I need to catch up on. But this is like a YA standalone where I think this character is like house sitting on this island and the house that she's house sitting at first goes up in flames and is like, okay, I'm obviously not gonna get a job again, but then goes, is asked to look after this abandoned house and there's, you know, secrets in the abandoned house, what's happening? It's a bit of a vague synopsis, but basically abandoned house setting. <laughs> That's all we need to know. Oh, then we have one I'm so excited for. We have The Seventh Veil of Salon by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. This one is set in 1950s Hollywood. I have been saying, I actually don't know what exact decade, because I know, when does Seven Husbands Ever Hugo start? But there's something about the golden age of Hollywood that I just think is rife, rife, rife for like amazing stories. And it really upsets me that there's not more books set in this setting. I just, I would love to write a book set in 1950s Hollywood. I think it's so, oh, I love like the film studios and like the actresses and like, Oh, everyone's sleeping with each other. Like, I just think it's such a great setting. So this one's about this role that everyone wants and a um, ingenue, like a, you know, an unknown actress gets cast. We're following her and we're following an actress who really wanted the part. So it's more, his, it's like historical, see from Garcia. And I'm just, I just think this one's gonna be so much fun. I love, 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 love the setting. Then we have one that I've put on here kind of tentatively. It's I Need You To Know This by Jessa Maxwell. This is the author of The Golden Spoon, which I enjoyed but didn't love. And so this is the kind of author that I'm just thinking about giving a little bit of a second chance, you know? This one, we're following a columnist, a kind of, like, I think a help, like a, like, dear, Deirdre, like a, I don't know, <laughs> helper, newspaper helper gets murdered and a girl then takes the job vacancy and then investigates the murder. So, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this one. I'm intrigued. I want to give this author another chance because The Golden Spoon was such a fun synopsis, 
but yeah, not entirely sure what we're gonna think of this one. Next, we have two that recommended to me by patrons. We have The Phoenix Keeper by S.A. McLean. This seems to be like a cozy fantasy and we have a phoenix keeper who wants to save phoenixes, but it seems like they're an endangered species and there's no breeding program and they're trying to save the phoenix. And there's a griffin keeper who they're kind of like, you know, enemies with, but I think it's gonna be like, they're gonna fall in love. I think it's gonna be like a cozy fantasy romance. And one of my patrons was reading this on one of our reading sprints and saying how amazing it was. And I read the synopsis and I went, yeah, it's going straight in my basket. <laughs> Ooh, extra spicy sauce. That's going straight in my basket. Then we have one that I just love the, I love the cover for. It's the Full Moon Coffee Shop by Mai Mochizuki. This is a Japanese translated bestseller where there's like this cafe that's run by talking cats. Take a moment, take a moment, take a moment. <laughs> It's run by talking cats. And I think they, they tell your fortunes. Like you go in and these cats tell your fortunes. Oh, absolutely. I'm a bit nervous because it does seem like that Japanese convention of short stories, like Before the Coffee Gets Cold or uh, The Kamigawa Food Detectives or Days of Morosaki Bookshop, where I just have been not loving that kind of format lately. But cats running a coffee shop, talking cats, I mean. <laughs> it's poetry. Is one of God's masterpieces. Then we have one that I was intrigued by. We have You Will Never Be Me by Jesse Q. Santanto. And I put this on here because I enjoyed Vera Wong's guide night. Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for murder. I don't know, whatever. Vera Wong's. <laughs> I, can't remember, I can never remember the title of that one. And, you know, this author has written that and wrote the Dale for Auntie stuff. And this one seems very different. Like the cover is very different. It's a very different vibe. And it's like influencer thriller where these two characters, one is a very successful influencer. One is the woman who helped her become a very successful influencer. And then was then dropped. And she gets one of the influencer's kids' iPads and starts tracking her like schedule and changing things on the family calendar. Also, let's just talk about how I am not on my family's family calendar. My parents and my brother have a family calendar without me. And they're just like, they've never added me to it. They made it when I was away at uni and I've never been added to it. <sighs> Anyways. And then the woman who is not the influencer, the kind of stalk E goes missing. And it just sounds, it, it seems like a departure from this author's kind of typical vibe. So, I don't know, I'm intrigued by it. Then we have a tea kingfisher fantasy. We have a sorceress comes to call. So this is about, we've got our main character and her mother is like a bit sus. Like think Rapunzel and what's the woman's name? The one who traps Rapunzel, I get a similar vibe to them. And there's a mysterious death in the village so they flee and they go to this tavern and the mother seems to be trying to seduce I think one of the people in the new town that they're at, maybe he works at the pub, I'm not quite sure. And um, the daughter is like, oh, this is bad vibes. And the sister of the guy is like, oh, this is bad vibes. So I don't know if they're gonna try and come together to stop the marriage, but it's T. Kingfisher. It's T. Kingfisher. Then we have Death at the Sanatorium. I think this is an Icelandic uh, translated fiction where basically there was this murder at the sanatorium many, many years ago. Someone got put away for it. And then we have someone investigating the story 20 years later. And everyone, no one will say anything. It's hush, hush, hush. No one will, no one will spill the beans. So yeah, I've really enjoyed getting into more translated fiction, particularly like European translated fiction. I really like Swedish. Is it Swedish I really like? What is Bear Town and what, oh, is that Icelandic? And an elderly lady is up to no good. Sweden, 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 Sweden. Okay, interesting. So I wanna try this out, I'm very intrigued. Then we have The Life Impossible by Matt Haig. So Matt Haig obviously wrote The Midnight Library, which was incredibly successful. And I think this is gonna be along a similar line. We have a woman who was left a house in Greece after the death of one of her friends. And she goes and lives there and she's trying to uncover what happened to her friend. Uh, how did her friend die? Why did her friend die? But it also becomes a very much an examination of her life and what she's experiencing. I just thought this one sounded very beautiful, like all of Matt Haig's synopses do. Then we have another arc I was sent recently, unsolicited, but I'm excited about it. We have When Harry Was Here by Dustin Tao. So this is the author, what was the book called? Uh, You've Reached Sam, which I always wanted to read and never got to. So my plan is now to probably read this and if I enjoy it, pick up You've Reached Sam. This one, we've got Eric Lai, who after the death of his best friend, creates imaginary scenarios in his head to deal with his grief and he meets this boy 
who he starts hanging out with, but only he can see the boy. So does the boy exist? What's going on? Yeah, I heard so many good things about You've Reached Sam. So I imagine this is similarly, you know, hard hitting, emotional YA. So excited to give it a go. Also, I just love this author's covers. I think the covers are so beautiful. Then we have one I'm so excited for. It's an arc, you guys know I've got. I can't believe I've like contained myself to <laughs> Not reading this yet, but we have The Examiner by Janice Hallett. Yes, we do. God has smiled on me. <laughs> yes, he has. This is Janice Hallett's new one. Six students, one murder, time starts now. There's this art course where when the examiner gets all the documents, he thinks that someone was murdered on this art course and the rest of the students covered it up. So we've got like messages, emails, we've got the kind of projects of the students. I am so excited. <laughs> I think this sounds like such a fun premise. I really think Janice Hallett is hitting her stride. Like I really, I didn't love the appeal as much as I wanted to because I built it up so much in my mind that like it was unfair. <laughs> then the Twyford Code I think has one of the best twists of a book that I've ever read. Like it, it, the twist in the Twyford Code is absolutely amazing. And then I really feel like with the mis mysterious Casey Alperton Angel, she managed to like have that uniqueness, but also write a book that is so accessible to everyone. I really feel like that she hit her stride with that one. So I'm so excited, so excited for this one. Then we have a very interesting one. We have Here One Moment by Leanne Moriarty of uh, Big Little Lies fame, which I really, I love Big Little Lies. I love Big Little Lies. This one sounds very interesting. There's a plane and a woman comes on the plane and she tells everyone on the plane when they're gonna die. Some of them are gonna live to 103. Some of them she tells, you're dying next week, babe. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about it. Oh, really? <sighs> that sucks. That's, uh, I mean, I <laughs> and they all kind of laugh it off and think, oh, that's funny, whatever. But then people start dying at the time she said they were going to die. And this is so intriguing to me because I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Leanne Moriarty has done something speculative like this. All of her stuff has been pretty contemporary rooted in reality. And so it's very intriguing to see her do something like this. And I think the synopsis sounds great. So very, very excited for that one. Then we have probably my most excited release. We have We Self Murders by Richard Osman. <laughs> Guys, the Thursday Murder Club film starts filming like next week or in like a couple weeks. How am I gonna get? I, please, someone get me on that film set. I will. I would pay money to be an extra in that film. Please, I won't be like the woman in the Doctor Strange movie either, who's like in the background, like, <laughs> like I'll be a good actress. You won't even notice me. I just want to be on that film set. Richard, not gonna, not gonna, please. <laughs> I've given the synopsis many times, but we've got a father-in-law and daughter-in-law duo. The father-in-law, I think is ex-police or ex-investigator, but he loves, you know, his 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 routine. He loves his small, quiet life. Whereas the daughter-in-law, she's a jet setter. She's like, you know, I think she's like private security often for celebrities, but she's going here and everywhere. She loves like traveling and they team up together to solve murders and create like an investigation agency. And I'm just so excited. I'm very nervous, but I'm very much looking forward to it. Oh, then we have An Academy for Liars by Alexis Henderson. I have not yet read House of Hunger, but I loved Year of the Witching and thought it was so unique. And this one is about a school where everyone who goes there, who like gets invited to go to this school, it's like dark academia, has like powers of persuasion, has the art of persuasion. And I don't know, it just sounds very interesting. I'm, I've started to be a bit tentative with dark academia because I just feel like, you know, there's 10,000 dark academia books out there. But um, I, there was something very special about like Alexis Henderson's writing. So very much looking forward to this one. Then we have Somewhere Beyond the Sea by TJ Clune. This is the sequel to The House in Cerulean Sea. So I don't want to give the plot too much, but I believe this is pretty much Arthur's story, who is kind of the head of the orphanage that he works at. And I'm intrigued to see where this goes. Listen, in the Lives of Puppets was a low point for me and TJ Clune, but I feel like a sequel in the House of the C series, I'm surely I'm gonna love that. And we have the House of Last Resort, which I think has been out for quite a while in the US. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this. This is about a town, I think in Italy or something, where the mayor is selling off derelict buildings for one euro. So like, 
you know, come buy this house, but you have to live in the town for five years as part of the deal. So you get this house, you probably fix it up, and get a lovely place in Italian countryside for cheaper, but you have to live there for five years. And this couple move in and I think the house is haunted and it used to be owned by the church and the priests seem to be getting up to something. So I, I think this sounds like a very unique premise, but I haven't really heard anyone speak about it, even though it's been out for quite a while. So I don't know. Then we have, oh, I'm so excited for this one. We have Pick the Lock by A.S. King. So this is A.S. King's new release. A.S. King, you're gonna get weird shit, baby. You're gonna get weird shit. And this one is about um, a girl whose mother is often at work traveling around. And when she's left at home, she's left at home with her father and aunt who keep her and her sibling in tubes, in like, in these weird tubes <laughs> and it's about her trying to get out of these and be reunited with her mother and escape the kind of abuse that she's suffering and you know A.S. King's books are always often uh, very much fabulous and magical realism but uh, an allegory for something bigger so I'm very much looking forward to this one we haven't had an A.S. King release in a while since Switch and I usually you know, A.S. King usually does it for me. So very much looking forward to this one. Then we have a novella, Graveyard Shift by M.L. Rio, the author of If We Were Villains. And this one's just about a guy, he seems to be digging up graves and these characters are trying to figure out why he's digging up graves and is it linked to some weird shit that's going on in real life? I don't know, it sounds very interesting. I'm tentative because I didn't love If We Were Villains as much as everyone else loved If We Were Villains, but I'm tentatively excited. Then we have Disney High by Ashley Spencer. This is non-fiction into Disney, the height of Disney, Hannah Montana, Jonas Brothers, like <laughs> my childhood, Camp Rock, High School Musical. Oh, oh, I sat down with the president of Disney Channel and I said, I want to make history. And that's what this is. After loving Reach for the Stars so much, I am so, this is my kind of nonfiction apparently. N nostalgia nonfiction, I absolutely love. And this is like, where Reach for the Stars was a little bit prior to my time, this is my time. This is my time of Disney, Lizzie McGuire, Hannah Montana, Sunny with the Charts, Wizard of Waverly Place, you know, Sweet Life on Deck. <sighs> I'm so excited and it seems like it's, got interviews with many influential people. I don't know if it's like an oral history like Reach the Stars was where it's all through interviews or if it's gonna kinda be a narrative or, or written with interviews interspersed. Sorry, I've got a Miko hair somewhere on my face and it's really bothering me. <laughs> but I am very excited. Then we have Under the Same Stars by Libba Bray. The synopsis of this sounds interesting. We've got three different timelines, one in 1940s Germany, one in 1980s West Germany, and then one present day or 2020 in New York where like COVID is part of the plot. I'm just intrigued because we haven't had a Libra Bray in ages. I, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think a Libra Bray has come out since King of Scars, which was the f King of Scars? No. King of King of Crows, <laughs> which I feel like came out in like 2020. So it's been a long time and I really have enjoyed Libra Bray's writing and what she does with historical fiction. So I'm intrigued. Then we have The City in Glass by Nevo. Another Nevo. I love Nevo. I love Nevo. I need to read Nevo's other standalones because I've only been reading the the Singing Hill Cycle, but I have Siren Queen and The Chosen the Beautiful Treat. But this is a fantasy fantasy where um, there's a demon who rules this city and then the angels come and the city topples. And I think it's a love story between a demon and an angel. I'm very intrigued. I'm very intrigued. Nevo's writing, absolutely amazing. I'm very intrigued by this one. And then finally, I'll just think these two together. We have two Christmassy novellas from Murder Mystery series, which I'm intrigued about. We have The Mistletoe Mystery by Nita Prose, which is the sequel to The Maid, or like, you know, the, that series. And then we have Everyone This Christmas Has a Secret by Benjamin Stevenson, which is Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone series. I just love, I love Christmassy murder mysteries. Maybe I'll have to read quite a few Christmassy murder mysteries at the end of this year because I feel like there's so many of them. And it's very interesting to see how different series handle Christmassy murder mysteries because some don't do a murder. Some like think you're going to do a murder or some do like a missing object. I, th I'm just very intrigued by both of these. So, because they're both series I've enjoyed. So I will probably be reading these, but maybe I need to make progress in both of those series in order to do that. <laughs> Maybe I need to catch up on those. But yeah, those are all, after 10 years, <laughs> those are all my most anticipated releases for the second half of this year. Let me know which of these you're most excited for. I'm probably most excited for We Solve Murders, The Examiner, which I own. Um, the Queen Bee by Gina Dawson is calling to me. Seven Lives of the Suspects. There's so many good ones. There's so many good ones. A.S. King. <gasps> There's so many good ones. So let me know which of these you're most excited for. Also let me know if there's any 2024 releases for the second half of the year that I have not mentioned because um, I'm always looking for more. <laughs> Even though um, how many 2024 releases am I going to read by the end of the year? We'll see. <laughs> Hopefully I'll start doing better. But anyways guys, thank you so much for this video. I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye.